So what if every day were a Thanksgiving day? Would we plan a meal? Will we go together grocery shopping? Would we have a beautiful dinner with our friends and our families? Some of you would say, yes, I would really enjoy that. Some of you would say, no. I'd rather have a well, rather small meal with my family. So keep Thanksgiving there to a minimum. And that's what we've been doing for the last years. We, uh, Thanksgiving, it's a time for watching sports, shopping, and sometimes even eating, but not spending time with our families, our friends. So why is that this important time is not being taken seriously? Why is that this moment, this act of communion, is not taken being seriously by all of us? Eating is an act of communion. What's the meaning of that? Communion is to have in, have in something in common with other people. It's um, sharing something with other people. Uh, it's uh, sharing something, it's camaraderie, it's fellowship. It's something that we share with our, within our communities and within our society. But we have forgotten the important meaning of this in our daily lives. We are usually rushing, and we are not taking the time uh, to talk about it or to enjoy it. So let me tell you about some social experiments. The first one was about giving um, homeless people a plate. So they would have to put their, their food on plates. And they were given a diary. And they wrote and they thought that this was a really rehumanizing experience. A second, a second social experiment similar to this um, uh, the, was that the, the, the homeless people were served restaurant dinners. They were served gourmet-style dinners by servers. And this changed their perception of themselves and how everyone else perceived them. Because it's very important to feel that you have a home, that you can sit down and have this warm meal on a plate. But some of us, we're not lucky enough to have that whole meal. But if, we are ha if we're lucky enough to have it, one, why don't we take advantage of it, right? So, sometimes we just, we can acknowledge that this is very important, but we don't take advantage of it. We, um, we, eat, we buy fast foods because we consume these foods very fast. We go through um, drive-thrus so we can eat in our cars, and I've seen people eating while they're walking. Um, we swallow. We don't, we don't eat, really. We're just swallowing food. We don't, we don't care about the taste sometimes. Uh, we also talk with our friends when we are eating. We are checking uh, our messages. We're doing homework. We're checking the news. We're buying online. We're texting and we're talking with friends that are not even our friends through devices. And lately, we're even talking to devices. <laughs> so somehow, we've managed to get all this symbolic aspect of the food and of eating out of it. And you know what? A slow eating is good for you. Um, actually, it's a very good eating habit. You, you swallow better your foods. You have to chew them. <laughs> it's good for your stomach. You're going to feel uh, full and happy for a longer period of time. It's, good. Uh, it's a good eating habit, and it's, uh, a lot of healthy diet programs are included in it lately because it's really good for you. Actually, when you have a baby, uh, pediatricians will tell you, introduce your baby to solids, but please try to get the baby to sit with you at the dinner table. Tell them about the aspect, the social and cultural aspect of foods. Because that's the moment when we can learn to listen. When that's the moment where li we listen. That's the moment when we can have a civil conversation about politics. That's the moment where we can discuss and we can talk, and then we can have friendships. And then we can, friendship, we can have friendships with our families as well. So it's a very important moment for all of us. La sobremesa is a Latin tradition, and it's been lost as well. It's after-dinner talk. 
And it's a beautiful time to share our experiences of what has happened to us during the day. But sometimes, uh, sometimes I feel that we are not evolving, that we are going backwards with all this. Let's talk one more time about Thanksgiving. The pilgrims were given foods. There was a feast, probably. The, there was a moment when we had two cultures together, right? We had the pilgrims and we had the Native Americans. Beautiful moment in history. Somehow, this is our tradition now. Through years, we have made it our tradition. Now we know that we have to buy turkey. By the way, there was no turkey at that time. <laughs> we had mashed potatoes and yams and so many diff different traditions, and it varies home to home. But the important thing is that we consider this traditional foods. So what is part of our national cuisine? What traditional foods do we consider part of that nation, national cuisine? For example, those two countries, Peru and Chile, will fight about pisco. We have this obsession to know where was Pisco uh, originally from? Who created this recipe? Where was the first time that someone had this recipe? Who invented it? Who invented this spirit? But my question is, do you think these two countries would fight for it? The, the title of my, um, of my talk today was Cooking Communities, because I was tracing an analogy um, to the book of Benedict Anderson, um, Imagined communities. This is a book about the emergence of nation-state and identity and nationalism. Uh, according to Anderson, to be part of the community, of your national community, you should be able to die for it. Would we die for a dish? Would we die for this spirit? Would we die for our national cuisines? How important is this for us? Every time I think about national uh, cuisines, I think about tortilla española. Tortilla española has the name española, so it's from Spain. And tortilla española is just that omelet, um, eggs and potatoes, sometimes onions, but basically eggs and potatoes. Very simple, very traditional, very common, and they really like it. But potatoes are not from Spain. Potatoes are from the Andean region. So every time we think about it, we are thinking, oh, the colonial times, right? We have to think of all that past, good or bad, but it's all reflected in that beautiful dish. So you see how potatoes have been traveling. And alfajores are these beautiful cookies with dulce de leche, very common and traditional in Argentina. But every time we read them, we have to remember that al fajor, al, is a remembrance of Moorish Spain, not Spain today, Muslim Spain. So all those recipes came to the Americas, are now being eaten as part of the traditional food of Argentina. And that is a very important thing because food is always local and food is always global. And somehow, Food is local and global at the same time. Let's go to something closer to our hearts and closer to our tummies. <laughs> pizza. Um, pizza is an Italian dish. We know that. But it has tomato sauce. At some moment, it started having tomato sauce. Tomato, original from the Central Americas. So somehow, at some moment during the 19th century, Italian immigrants brought back this pizza to different parts of the Americas. Don't we love it now in the US? <laughs> and I always think, oh my god, it's a round trip for tomatoes. If we try to think about the immigration process of pizza, that's a very interesting one, right? There's another one, quinoa, superfood. We found that it was a superfood a couple years ago. But quinoa soup is a staple dish of Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, of different countries. Not one. Quinoa soup doesn't know political difference. Quinoa soup, it's not like an anthem. An anthem is a very um, important thing, a flag, an anthem for each, uh, each of, the, of the persons of a country. 
But quinoa, it's not. It's a staple food for so many people. And neighbors from different countries, they share that as well. It's, it's more, let's say, mm, organic. The way it evolves, it evolves like people. Food has that quality as well. So quinoa soup, it could be the traditional dish of many places. But now we have quinoto, quinoa risotto. <laughs> and that might become, at some moment, the traditional food of some place or some group of people. One more example, 19th century book, recipe book, Conejo a la Sumac Warmi. Conejo in Spanish, the book was written in Spanish in South America. And uh, Conejo is rabbit. And a la is the French way of saying to the. So it's, uh, it's a French mode. And it, just remember that France was the Western reference for a, a while. And it's still our culinary reference. And Sumac Warmi is Quechua for beautiful woman. So at that moment, we have the three cultures that were not the same in the 19th century, but we have them all represented in one same dish, in one same recipe. And that's very important because we are paving the road for inclusion. One more example, gnocchi. Gnocchi is this very delicious, simple thing, potato and flour, therefore very cheap. Italian immigrants, when they couldn't make ends meet at the end of the month in Argentina, would have gnocchi, artisanal gnocchi. You make it very fast at home. Some days in Argentina, people eat it at the end of the month. They just don't know why. <laughs> we just have these traditions. Do you know your traditions? We just have these traditions all around us, and we just have no idea why we do what we do. So today, what I wanted to talk about was how we're forgetting these traditions, how we're forgetting what are we eating, why we don't know all the diversity that it's in our plates, or the immigrant process that it's in our plates. It's so, so simple to try to trace that. And it's way complex to try to put all these human beings together in the same plate, right? So um, let's go back to my Thanksgiving dinner, this beautiful time for communion. Don't wait for your next Thanksgiving. Think of it as tomorrow. Tomorrow, for my Thanksgiving dinner, what do I have? Do I sit with friends? Do I sit with new people? What do I do to make that Thanksgiving dinner special? I slow down. I left my phone for a while. So please, next time you eat, slow down. Next time you eat, think about what you're eating. Next time you eat, try a different recipe. Embrace diversity. Next time you eat, try to cook. Why not? Next time you eat, think, reflect of what you're doing, and of course, enjoy. <laughs>